Hi, Dr. Yas here. This video is going to focus on the concept of balance and try to explain the actual mechanism by which balance is achieved. I'm referring to side to side balance. The person who, when they're walking, doesn't feel stable, um, even maybe standing, feels like they're going to fall to one side. And there is this perception that they have a lack of balance. Uh, I think it's important to understand that balance is comprised of two components. There's the awareness of where, of where you are in space, which comes from the semicircular canals in your ear and your cerebellum. So what happens is your brain is trying to understand where you are in space. Now, let's say, for instance, you were starting to fall to the side right? It senses that you're not perfectly upright and that you're shifting to the side. The whole idea is that the awareness of that in one aspect of the brain should now send signals to the motor cortex of the brain to tell the muscles to contract to then stop you from falling or to push you back to the center. So there's two elements of balance. There's the neurological component or the sensory awareness where you are in space and then there's the ability to respond to those signals by creating contractile force in the proper muscles to allow you to remain upright. For the virtual, almost complete group of people that I've treated over 27 years, they had no indication that there was a neurological deficit in their balance, that it was actually just muscle weakness. The very simple way to indicate this is that if the person's having a balance deficit when standing or trying to walk, all they have to do is sit in a chair without the back being supported and see if they're able to keep their torso upright. If the torso is able to be held upright and they're not sensing they're going to fall to any side, well, that indicates clearly that the neurological sensory awareness is intact. And in fact, the only problem is, is that they don't have the muscular contractile force of the muscles of the legs to push them back to being upright. So hopefully that would make sense to, person, to a person who's being told they have a balance deficit, that the simple way to check and see if it's the neurological component, just sit with the back unsupported and see if you can do it. If you can do it, you don't have a neurological deficit, you just have muscular weakness. So for the person who has that tendency, the, the falling forward and back is a different issue. This is the side to side feeling. So I want to explain how the muscular component of being able to remain upright is developed when we're looking at the person from a side to side basis. And it all relates to the gluteus medius muscle. And I've talked about the gluteus medius muscle and anyone who knows me knows that I think the gluteus medius muscle is the most important muscle in the body because it basically creates a level uh, pelvis. And when you have a level pel pelvis, it means that the distance that your feet travel to the floor is the same. It means that the spine can remain perpendicular to the ground. It means that the forces of gravity running through the shoulders is equal and that the neck is equal. So you have your best chance of optimal performance with the least chance of overworking your muscles and straining. So let me just explain exactly how the mechanism works. So here we're going to look at the picture and we're going to be looking right here. So this is your pelvis. Here's your two legs. Here's your gluteus medius is on both sides. So let's say that we were to take your right leg off the floor. If we didn't were to take the right leg off the floor, you would imagine that we have two supports here. If we take this support away, that's going to leave nothing on the right side of the body to support the body, and the pelvis is just going to simply fall to that side. Hopefully that would be logical. People would, that would make sense. That's why when you're standing on the left foot, if your gluteus medius is weak, you will always fall to the right side. Quite simply, you took the foot away. There's no ability to support yourself on the right side. So you expect the pelvis to fall to that side, which takes your center of mass above it to the right. So now let's look at how does the body respond? What was the evolutionary development that accounts for the ability that you should be able to take your right foot off the floor and still remain balanced because clearly to perform your functional activities, you're going to have to have some sense of balance. At some point, you're going to be able to have to take one foot off the floor, like for instance, with walking or going upstairs. And so we have to be able to still remain balanced. 
So the way it works is that this is the gluteus medius muscle. You can see it's attached at the top to the pelvis and at the bottom it's attached to your hip joint. So if you imagine that the hip joint is the stable portion of the muscle and the pelvis is the mobile point, if we would have then, you can see that the fibers are vertical. So if we would have grabbed the gluteus medius and pulled down towards the hip joint, you would see that this would be creating a downward force of the pelvis on this side. Well, if this would have been pulled down, what would you expect it to do on the opposite side? Bring it back up and create a level pelvis. Can everyone see that? If we see that the muscle contracts, this is down the floor, so this is stable. We're going to be pulling from the stable side of the muscle, which is going to pull the top of the pelvis down on this side. That's going to create a level pelvis. When that is working optimally, it will allow you to keep your pelvis level, even though you've taken this foot off the floor. When the pelvis is level, you have a stable situation. You can single leg stand and be able to be fully balanced. So the answer to being able to take the foot off the floor on the right is having a strong enough gluteus medius muscle to be able to have it pull down from the pelvic rim to the hip joint to allow the pelvis to be main, main level even though there's no support on the right side. So for all those people who have gotten some sort of therapy due to balance deficits and they'll make you try to take one foot off or walk with one foot in front of the other on a center, it's all nonsensical crap. All they're doing is inciting a stability issue. They're trying to make you unstable. And the idea is, well, if I make you unstable, you can condition yourself to adapt to that instability. That's nonsense. Either you have the strength to adapt to it or you don't. So the only way you're ever going to improve your balance issue if you're having this side-to-side -side issue is to strengthen the gluteus medius muscle. And that has to be done through an exercise called hip abduction. And you have to know how to perform hip abduction correctly. And that's all part, not only this understanding, but the understanding of how to strengthen the gluteus medius muscle is a part of the understanding that is core to the YAS method. This very unique method that I develop, which is outside the medical system, you're not going to get this understanding from a chiropractor, a physical therapist, an orthopedist, a neurologist. Nobody understands what I just showed you. This is mechanical. This is an understanding of how forces are applied through the body and how the body responds to them. That's where my background is outside of my educational training. Uh, I, I've been weightlifting for 30 year, 33 years. I put on 60 pounds of muscle. I've developed an understanding of the biomechanics and physics of weightlifting. I've understood the how the uh, aspects of joints actually move to create mo motion. I understand how the muscles create that movement to allow for normal motion. I understand how function is developed and how muscles are applied to allow for normal function. And if there is dysfunction, what muscles are involved? That's basically my understanding that I developed beyond my educational background. So if this is making sense to you and you would like to utilize this to help you with your balance deficit, you can contact me at Dr. Mitch at MitchellYass.com, D-R-M-I-T-C-H and M-I-T-C-H-E-L-L-Y-A-S-S.com, Dr. Mitch at MitchellYass.com. If you'd like to set up a Skype or Zoom session, you can do so by contacting me at Dr. Mitch at MitchellYass.com. I'll help you confirm what's going on. And if we do reaffirm that it is a muscular deficit, I'm going to demonstrate how to perform the exercises and you're going to then pre pre uh, perform them under my supervision. The sessions of videotape, which is a nice feature, so you get to use that going forward. Uh, if you like this video and it's making sense to you, please give it a thumbs up. If you like my YouTube channel, Dr. Mitchell Yas, please subscribe so you can get notifications when new videos are added. I hope that people perceive this information as very applicable. That's the goal. It's not enough to just give you pie-in-the-sky theory. The goal is to give you an understanding of how you can take control of your life to allow you to resolve your symptoms and return you to full functional capacity. That is my goal. That is my quest. That is outside any educational background I've had, any training that I've had in my supposed um area of profession, which is physical therapy. Everything I do is outside of that. I, I decided to go in this path because I saw how inept my education and training was. So I want people to understand the OS method is completely outside the medical system. This is a 
a muscular-based understanding of dysfunction and the cause of symptoms. All right? So for now, this is Dr. Mitchell Yas, wishing you a pain-free, fully functional life. Let's all get pain-free. Let's get our lives back. It's under your control. You just have to make the right call, the right decision to move to the Yas Method. Bye-bye for now.